Welcome to the St. George's University School of Medicine Virtual White Coat Ceremony. The tradition began in 1993 when the Arnold P. Gold Foundation created the White Coat Ceremony at Columbia University's College of Physicians and Surgeons to promote humanism in medicine. With guidance from the Gold Foundation, St. George's University School of Medicine initiated its own white coat ceremony in 1996, long before many other US medical schools. In 2003, the Gold Foundation founded the Gold Humanism Honor Society, widely known as GHHS, an international society dedicated to the promotion of humanism, professionalism, and ethics in medical practice and education. Dr. Gold was an international advocate for humanism in healthcare. We are honored to have hosted Dr. Gold and his wife Sandra as keynote speakers for our Spring 2005 White Coat Ceremony. SGU's chapter of GHHS is based in the Bioethics Division of the Department of Clinical Skills and supported by the Dean of Medicine's Office. Our chapter established the Humanitarian Student Organization, HSO, in 2009, through which Basic Sciences students promote humanism across the SGU and Grenadian communities. Chapter members are nominated by their peers and inducted during their clinical training when they participate in an ongoing chapter project. We now welcome Dr. Glenn Jacobs, Provost of St. George's University. Welcome. I am Dr. Glenn Jacobs, Provost at St. George's University, and I am very pleased that you could join us at this virtual white coat ceremony. I want to start by expressing how proud I am of how you have adapted to distance learning. You have been responsive and resilient during these times, which will contribute to your personal and professional success throughout your time at St. George's University and thereafter. We remain dedicated to supporting you as you start your journey in the field of medicine. When it's safe to do so, you will meet in person one day. But for now, focus on how this pledge of commitment to your chosen lifelong profession brings you together as future physicians. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Charles R. Modica, Chancellor, St. George's University. Greetings. My name is Charles Modica, and I'm the founding chancellor of St. George's University. This uh, white coat ceremony is unique to me because in all the decades that I've been involved with the university, we have done these ceremonies in person. This should not take away from the significance of the ceremony. It's a very important ceremony in your lives. It's the beginning of the end of your education, hopefully. You don't have many more degrees you can uh, go for at this point. But I want to tell you that in 1976, when the university was founded 45 years ago, I was proud to be the first chancellor. I was only two years older than the average age of the charter class. And at 29 years of age, I never had any doubt of the success of our university. And we did it because the charter class students, like you, were dedicated in what they wanted to achieve. They wanted to achieve it on their own, and whatever help the university gave them to do it, they welcomed. But they had to have that fire in them. And I believe you still do. It'll be difficult for you in the world of a pandemic to start, to be online, to do it in a different way. But I can tell you the facilities the university has now, which are quite extensive, very few of them were there for the charter class. So in many ways, they did it on their own. They had the faculty there in person. They worked with each other and you'll be able to do that online as well. And they had all the tools that they needed, as you do. It's significant that the only two remaining people associated with that university 45 years ago 
that are still here to greet you would be myself and Dr. Dean Rao. And Dean Rao has been a very good friend of the university and my, my own friend, certainly for years now. And he's gone a long way to see the successes of all of the students that started at St. George's. He regularly communicates with them. We've had the sons and daughters of a lot of our earlier graduates go through the school now. And we realize that the significance of St. George's is the fact that you're able to do it with one another, with a dedicated faculty and administration that cares about you and your success. And I'm so proud that at the ceremonies that we've had since the charter class, that we've always had this inspiration with the students in the classes coming in, knowing that you can and will succeed. You know, in the world of medicine, especially here in the United States, St. George's University has achieved a significant milestone in the past decade. We are the largest single provider of physicians to the United States of any school in the world. We're proud of that. And it means a lot to me to know that the country of Grenada has assisted in the education of all of those individuals. And being number one in terms of the, being a provider is important, but the quality of our graduates is second to none. And at many white coat ceremonies previously, we've had speakers from all over the world. And I can't help but think of one now during the pandemic, that you, a name you'll know, and that was Dr. Fauci. He was one of our earlier white coat speakers. And to have him at our School of Medicine a few decades ago meant a lot to us at the time. And now when we've gone through this together and we realize the significance he has in the world of medicine, we're so proud to know that people like that have been associated with St. George's. And we're proud of you for being part of the next generation. I'd like to introduce now our newly appointed Dean of the School of Medicine, Dr. Marios Lucas. Welcome and congratulations for your acceptance at St. George's University. I'm Dr. Marios Lucas and I'm the Dean of School of Medicine. The faculty and I in Grenada, we are looking forward for your arrival to the island in the coming terms. Let's reflect on a few of the principles of the oath you will affirm upon graduation from this institution, but also the professionalism commitment during your white coat ceremony. At the heart of the oath and professionalism commitment is a result to treat the sick to the best of your ability, to preserve patient privacy, and to safeguard life. It is also calls to mind the responsibility to share your wisdom with others. I recognize that in entering the field of medicine, you join a community where the team is of utmost importance to success as compared to individual effort. To this end, you must strive for excellence in your pursuit of knowledge. As you don't this white physician coach, you pledge an oath of professionalism and service. While these values are under attack, they're a necessary requirement in medical practice. Professionalism is a commitment to integrity, altruism, competence, and ethics in the service of others. A physician must constantly balance the needs of his patients and society against the available resources and his own interests. We must endeavor to honor the sacred trust and privilege that society places in medical professionals, cognizant that the standard is an ideal that we must continuously aim to achieve. I welcome you to the noble profession of medicine. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Richard Yolds, a good friend and our keynote speaker. Dr. Olds is an educator, physician, and an administrator during a distinguished career spanning more than 30 years. Dr. Olds became president of St. George's University in Grenada on August 28, 2015. Prior to joining SGU, he was the vice chancellor for health affairs and the founding dean of the School of Medicine at the University of California, Riverside. In 2010, Dr. Olds joins, joined University of California, Riverside to lead the creation of the new School of Medicine the first LCME-accredited medical school in California in more than four decades. Dr. Olds is a graduate of Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine and trained in internal medicine at the Mass General Hospital in Boston. He was an infectious disease fellow and one of the nation's first geographic medicine fellows at University Hospitals of Cleveland, where he, he also served 
as medical chief resident and faculty member. He served as a full professor of medicine, pediatrics, molecular cell and developmental biology at Brown University. He was professor and chairman of medicine at the Metro Health Campus of Case Western Reserve University. His role at the University of California, Riverside was preceded by a decade long stint as professor and chair of medicine at the Medical College of Wisconsin. In addition to his academic background, Dr. Rhodes is a tropical disease specialist with extensive experience working in Asia and Africa. He has over 100 peer review articles and book chapters primarily on international health topics. He currently serves on World Health Organization expert panel and was chairman of the board of a large Gates Foundation project to deworm children in Sub-Saharan Africa. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Richard Olds. Welcome, I'm Dr. Richard Olds, president of St. George's University, and it's my pleasure to be your keynote speaker for the White Coat Ceremony today. I'm talking to you from Northern Vermont, and I think all of you are probably scattered all over the world, and I look forward to the opportunity when we can all get together. In addition to being president of St. George's, I also teach in both the medical school and the veterinary school. And for over 40 years, I've trained young physicians like yourselves uh, to be better physicians. Well, let me start with some bad news. When you put on that white coat today, you're not gonna know one bit more of medicine and you're not gonna know any more basic science or anything more about how to cure patients of disease. But when you put on that white coat, you do assume the responsibility to being a thoughtful and caring physician. You must take on the mantle of professionalism associated with our profession, even if you don't know anything more than you do today. When you think about it, society imparts tremendous opportunities and privileges to those of us in the medical profession. We are allowed to examine the bodies of our patients uh, they tell us the most intimate details about things that they don't share with anyone else. And we are often with them in some of their most vulnerable and difficult times in their lives. In return for that rare privilege, we are expected to always behave in our patient's best interest, to be thoughtful, to be caring, to be what you would want as your physician. Well, the white coat ceremony is symbolic of that activity. But interestingly, the white coat has not always been associated with physicians. In the 17th and 1800s, physicians wore black frocked coats. It really was until the end of the 19th century uh, that uh, physicians uh, became associated with the color white. That really came from twin forces. Pasteur and the understanding of the germ theory of disease led to white for sterility and cleanliness. And on the other hand, the marriage between modern medical science and the medical profession uh, evolved. And if you will, the laboratory coat became the physician's white coat. So for virtually the entire 20th century, white coats were synonymous with physicians. But interestingly, it wasn't until the 1990s that the white coat ceremony became part of your training. Done first by Columbia University uh, in their medical school, now a white coat ceremony is virtually universal in almost all of the healthcare professions. Well, why is that? Why did people late basically feel that uh, uh, we needed something special to commemorate the beginning of your professional training? Well, perhaps one clue comes from an interesting survey that was done in 1950 of the most admired professions in the United States. In that year of 1950, the three most admired professions were doctors, clergies, and teachers. Interestingly, when that survey was repeated in 2000, the three most admired professions were clergy, teachers, and nurses. Physicians were no longer in that top tier. Now, I'll grant you, we didn't fall all the way to the lawyers and used car salesmen, but we fell substantially in that list. The American public in this case no longer held us in the same esteem as we had enjoyed 50 years before. And there was concern that that was driven not by our lack of medical knowledge, which was considerably greater in 2000 than 1950, but by a deterioration in our professional behavior and our caring and thoughtfulness in the interaction with our patients. 
Thus, the white coat ceremony to reinforce at the very beginning of your medical training the importance of that aspect of professionalism. Now, interestingly, we have an opportunity through this terrible pandemic of COVID to reestablish what's important in physicians. And that's really driven by two aspects of the COVID pandemic. The first is personal risk, especially before physicians were able to be vaccinated. All healthcare workers ended up working long hours in, in conditions that put them at risk to acquire COVID. And yes, some nurses and physicians died as a result of that commitment. The second was an unfortunate aspect of the transmission of this disease. In order to protect family and loved ones from acquiring disease themselves, patients were often left completely isolated, often in environments like intensive care units, where the only contact with humans basically were the doctors and nurses that cared for those patients. And increasingly, we took on that responsibility, not just to care for them, but to talk to them, to hold their hand, to be, if you will, surrogate loved ones. And because of that, that was a new opportunity for all healthcare professionals to be appreciated by greater society. Now, there's only a few times in our past history where similar circumstances have occurred. Probably the first was during the Dark Ages, during the bubonic plague, where physicians and other healthcare professionals risked getting plagued themselves in order to care for the dead and dying. And because of the fear that everyone had of acquiring plague from those plague victims, they were largely left alone in their time of greatest need. During the 19th century, with the large tuberculosis, so-called white death uh, of the 19th century, many physicians actually acquired tuberculosis as part of their care of uh, patients with consumption. In my own personal history, I am reminded of the early AIDS epidemic. I'm an infectious disease specialist. In the 1970s, I was often assigned to care for these uh, patients, usually young men that were admitted with this strange disease. At the time, we had no idea what caused the disease. We certainly had no treatment, and they had a life expectancy usually measured in weeks and months. There wasn't much that we could do from a medical standpoint to treat them besides keeping them comfortable and attempting to treat some of their opportunistic infections. But the one thing I can always remember is I could be there to talk to them, to hold their hand, and to comfort them at the end. Well, the COVID uh, pandemic has given us again that opportunity. And we, I think as professionals, have risen to that occasion. Now, if you doubt that new um, responsibility and appreciation, I ask you to remember where across the world on designated times, people came out of quarantine onto their windowsills, onto their porches, and applauded those in the healthcare profession. Probably the greatest testament to how a society appreciates those of us on the front lines. Now, I'd like to end my story with a, uh, my talk with a personal story uh, to talk a bit more about the meaning of that white coat. Many years ago, I was the chairman of the Department of Medicine at the Medical College of Wisconsin. And during that time, I did a lot of inpatient attending, either at the University Hospital or at our affiliated Veterans Hospital. And this story takes place in July of uh, that year. And July was always the time that I wanted to be in attending because the house staff were brand new and the third year medical students, this was their first rotation. Now, I had attended fairly frequently at the VA and I got to know a lot of their patients that were recurrently coming in and out of the hospital. And one of them was Mr. Anderson. Now, Mr. Anderson was a retired dairy farmer from northern Wisconsin, and uh, he had served in the Vietnam War. Now, Mr. Anderson had a tough final years, a few years of his life. Uh, he, his wife had died uh, before he had. Uh, he had been diagnosed with leukemia and had to go through several rounds of uh, very difficult chemotherapy. And probably worst of all, as he suffered a massive stroke that required him to leave his dairy farm and move in with his daughter, who lived in the greater Milwaukee area. 
He was bed bound and as a result was frequently admitted to the hospital with various opportunistic infections, urinary tract infections, pneumonias, etc. And so I got to know Mr. Anderson and his family quite well during my time of attending. Well, in this first week of July, Mr. Anderson again came to the VA and was admitted to my service since I had known him previously. And I assigned a brand new medical student, Bill, to his case. Now I assigned Bill in part because I knew he was from the dairy farming area of Northern Wisconsin and I thought uh, they might have something in common. And in fact, it turned out to be the case. I would often come by in rounds and a Bill would be in there talking to Mr. Anderson about uh, trout fishing and about uh, life on a dairy farm. And uh, Bill would often ask him about uh, the Vietnam War, something that he knew very little about. Well, after several days, we got uh, Mr. Anderson over his urinary tract infection and he was discharged home. But uh, true to form, he was readmitted several times during that month for other problems. And uh, Bill again took care of him during that time and, and uh, we tuned him up a bit and he returned home. Now at the end of the month, I rotated off that service and I actually had to go away uh, to a medical conference. And when I got back, my secretary gave me a phone message from Mr. Anderson's daughter. I called her up and she told me that uh, during the time I was gone that Mr. Anderson had passed away and I told her I was sorry that I wasn't able to be there for her and the family at the end. But she told me an interesting story. She said that her father was a deeply religious man and he had wondered for many months why God had punished him so. His wife had died, you know, he had become very, very ill and suffered through that treatment. And most disturbing to him was when he had his massive stroke that required him to leave his beloved dairy farm and, and be an invalid and uh, live in the big city. And uh, he couldn't understand why God did that to him. And she told me just a few days before Mr. Anderson passed, he talked to her and he said, you know, I finally realized what God's message was for me. He wanted me to leave, live for a few more months so I could help Bill be a better doctor. That is the meaning of that white coat. You will learn from your faculty a lot of medical facts, how the body works, how it breaks down in disease. You will learn about how to diagnose difficult uh, illnesses and how to treat them, what the latest treatment is. But if you're open to it, you'll learn how to be a better doctor, largely from your patients. So as you don your white coat today, welcome to the noble profession of medicine. Thank you and God bless. We would now like to introduce our white coat recipients. The white coat serves as a symbol of your entry to the profession and your commitment to uphold the duties and trust associated with medicine and medical training.
We now welcome Dr. Alina Wade, Clinical Instructor, Anatomical Sciences, and Assistant Dean of Students of St. George's University, to lead our White Coat recipients in reciting aloud the professional commitment. This commitment was written by a student task force in 1995 and has been recited at each of our School of Medicine White Coat ceremonies. Hello, I'm Dr. Lena Wade and I'll be leading you through your professional commitment, so please read along with me. I welcome any physicians viewing to join in. Today is the beginning of my medical education and training as a physician. I acknowledge my responsibility to continue the pursuit of knowledge and understanding until that day when I will cease to be a practicing physician. I am entering training for a noble profession in which my interest must always be subservient to those who may seek my assistance. I must be ever conscious of the value of my fellow health professionals and treat them with respect at all times. My classmates at St. George's University are now my colleagues, and I owe to them the same support and encouragement to achieve their goals as I hope to receive from them. I will work alongside my colleagues and professors with tolerance, compassion, and honesty. I acknowledge my obligation to adhere to the university honor code and to conduct myself with integrity and in an ethical manner at all times henceforth. I shall do all within my power to show in myself an example of all that is honorable and good throughout my medical career. It is a privilege to have been given the opportunity to become a physician. May I be ever conscious of that privilege and never abuse it. Congratulations to each of you, and I look forward to meeting you in the upcoming terms. Thank you for allowing me to participate. As we draw to a close, we would like to thank the Arnold P. Gold Foundation for the Humanism in Medicine pins placed on each student's white coat. Students, families, faculty, staff and administrators, thank you for your support and presence at this ceremony. We would also like to say a special thank you to all our inspiring speakers, including Dr. G. Richard Olds, our keynote speaker, whose message was truly inspirational to us all. Thank you for joining us for this White Coat Ceremony.